Do you know why some electric cars have more than one motor? In some cases, two, in other cases, three, and in very few cases, four. Why would a car need four motors? Well, there's a good explanation for that. And I have someone, probably one of the best people in the world, to explain to all of us why. Ready? Welcome to E4Electric, your number one source of electric car scoop. If this is your first time here and you are interested in everything that's going on in the world of electric cars, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, let's talk about electric car motors. And most people believe that the way you make an electric car is you take a regular car, you know, throw the engine out and put a motor in. And in a lot of cases, especially in the earlier days, that would be true. But now... Things are getting complicated. So let's get to my mystery guest, who is none other but the former chief engineer for the Tesla Model S and the current CEO of Lucid Motors, Peter Rawlinson. Before that, a quick reminder that this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the Tesla community's accessory store. Use E4 Electric, the name of this channel, as a discount code for all of your purchases over $100. All right, here's my conversation with Peter at the Lucid headquarters. Here we go. All right, let me, let me ask you about something that I've been wondering for a while. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, the electric cars, then they came on the market, we just said, hey, they, 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 there was, used to be an engine, now there's a motor, yeah. off we go. Yeah. Yeah. Then all of a sudden there was a dual motor. It's like, mm. oh, okay, all right, that's for mm. Then Then came uh, quad, and yeah. now try, mm. actually, mm. they kind of will. So now mm. we got one, two, three, f up to four f yes. motors yeah. uh, in, in a single car, mm. and a lot, of, a lot of cases they're not the same, they're performing two different functions. Can you tell us the difference and benefits of uh, each configuration? Sure, sure. Well, a lot of it's cost. Uh, cost versus complexity and performance. Um, in its simplest form, you're right, a single motor. You can have that at rear-wheel drive or front-wheel drive. Uh, there's nothing in it, really. Uh, it depends what the layout of the car is. If you want a, a city car, there's an advantage in having a front-wheel drive car. Uh, a more performance-oriented uh, uh, car, rear-wheel drive, more of a driving machine. But um, one thing is clear, to get um, really high performance, great 0 to 60 times, you know, sub, mm, low threes, down into the twos, you really need the tractability, the traction that you can get with four-wheel drive. You're not going to get sub three seconds to 60 very easily with standard road cars, tyres, uh, we just rear-wheel drive. A Formula One car can do it, but those are very sticky tyres. So um, the, that is one driver, um, and the, the the solution there has been to, uh, if we look at a plan view of the car, uh, to put uh, a, initially, um, if that's the front of the car, these are the, the wheels here, um, traditionally you'd put a single motor in the rear for, for rear-wheel drive. Um, as I say, to get the, the uh, four-wheel drive capability to get sub-zero, it's three, three seconds to 60, it's advantageous to add another motor to the front here. Now, it's important to recognize that if we look at the side view of the car here, that when that car is accelerating, um, accelerating this way. Uh, the tractive forces from the tyres are pushing backwards that way. And because we have this uh, inertial effect of the position of the centre of gravity of the car here, you get the car wants to load its rear, uh, its weight on the rear tyres. Um, and as a consequence, you actually get more weight transferred onto the rear wheels than you do onto the front wheels. And you see that with cars sometimes squatting under acceleration. And the more extreme that acceleration is, the greater that becomes. I can see and it by how often I have to go to, the, to change my tires. No, when no, I had no, a absolutely, yeah. you see that. So here's the thing. Um, uh, on a limiting case, very roughly, it's almost a two to one uh, in terms of the, 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 the loading on those tires and therefore the tractive uh, force that they can take. So here, there's, a, there's, a, there's an interesting opportunity here. If, if you're a relatively small company and you have just one type of motor, 
and you want to put double the amount on the rear, you can actually make the car with three motors, effectively very similar performance motors, and you could put two of the same motors here. And there are a few, a few, a few examples of this. Um, and that really happens to fit as well, because remember that the front wheels have to steer, and this, this steering takes up space. It's uh, trickier to fit two motors in the front than it is the rear. So this makes a lot of sense for performance driving and a really um, sensible um, economical way of creating a performance car because effectively you can put three motors, pretty much similar specifications, and get twice the power, twice the torque to the rear wheels as the front. And just to be clear, each of these motors are in charge of their own Indiv wheel. That's, okay, a, that's right. a motor per wheel. So that gives you the opportunity to do electronic torque vectoring on the rear, which means you can power each of the rear wheels independently. But you What's can't, the benefit of that? Well, the benefit of that is really on the limit handling and drivability. Um, for most people, most of the time, they won't feel the difference. But if you want a car which has got extreme uh, performance capability, uh, which has got track capabilities, then there is a marginal advantage in doing that. Now you can do, have a very similar effect by linking the, um, the brake system to the, the motor drive system, so we just pinch the brakes with, with the, with the, effectively with the ABS system uh, and, and, and create a um, a sort of um, torque vectoring effect. It's not as elegant as a technical solution, but it does work. So with the three motor system, you can do an element of ABS initiated uh, torque vectoring for the front axle and link that with true electronic torque vectoring for the rear axle. But the ultimate solution is, of course, uh, four motors, one per wheel, and that's, that's an amazing solution. But of course, it's, it comes at a uh, premium price. Yeah, and uh, just because I, we just saw the uh, tank turn from, from Rivian, but really any car with four motors can do that, correct? Essentially spin around itself on the right ground, not on the it parking needs lot. The, it needs the right ground, uh, and it could be quite uh, costly in terms of uh, your, your tire bill. <laughs> right. But how does it actually work? Because people say, well, how can it completely turn without actually moving the wheels, uh, at least covering some ground? How does that work? Well, it's just literally one wheel turns one way the other, the other way. It literally does work like a tank. So the, <laughs> the spin thing spins like on its own axis. All right. Well, um, I, I would love to experience this one day. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, uh, a lot of times when we're in a situation of a dual motor or a uh, tri-motor, mm -hmm. the motor that's responsible for the, for the front axis, uh, axle is, is, has a completely different role than the motor or, or the pair of motors that are on the back. Yeah. Uh, talk yeah. a little bit about that. No, you can. And, and uh, companies which historically have gone for uh, an induction motor for performance have mixed uh, induction motor with PM permanent magnet and so a solution which has been used in production has been to have two motors um, and that's an induction motor here so that's a, an induction motor there's a permanent magnet and the car for range and efficiency inherently pretty well uses um, the front motor for most of the time. It's effective a two-wheel drive car. The driver doesn't really notice this. But for bursts of acceleration, the, the induction machine um, kicks in. And of course, um, there is an advantage with an induction machine that um, it has no torque for free, free wheeling. So if you have this just running behind and not being used, the losses are pretty minimal. Uh, but I think those days are gone. Uh, to a certain extent, because I think we're, a, we're now in an era with better understanding of permanent magnet solutions where we can get an extraordinary power. Um, with Lucid Air, we're going to have permanent magnet front and rear, and we've made some breakthroughs in um, the, 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 the power density of our permanent magnet uh, solution. Uh, our, our motor, inverter, uh, transmission and uh, differential set combined is hitting over 16 
kilowatts per litre, which is an extraordinary figure. And, and we, we, we've worked uh, assiduously to achieve that over a number of years. Um, with that sort of performance capability, really, uh, there's, there's no need for the, the performance attributes of an induction machine. Now, one of the, the disadvantages of a permanent magnet motor is that you have this cogging torque because there are magnets in the rotor, just spinning it, spinning it induces losses, even if it's just freewheeling. And we have made a series of breakthroughs of our design to reduce those losses very, very significantly compared with uh, our closest competitors. So for a daily driver, somebody who enjoys driving, yeah. but you know, is kind of reasonable and obviously a budget uh, is, is important for a lot of people, which configuration would you prefer for a general case? One, two, three or four? Um, for most people, most of the time, in, in an urban environment, a single motor, front wheel drive is fantastic. Uh, it's plenty, but that's really for a sort of small city car up to sort of Volkswagen Golf sort of size. Once we go to a, 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 a sedan, maybe a BMW 5 Series size, I'd say one motor in the rear rear wheel drive is fine. But then as soon as you want to get more performance oriented, two motors is the way to go. And if you really are a speed freak, three or four. I really can't wait to get into a Rivian or any other car with uh, quad motors to experience the tank turn. That, that would be absolutely awesome. All right, so if you have any questions, definitely put them in the comment section because this is not my last conversation with Peter or on this topic. So I'm looking forward to those. Other than that, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.